Listen, I love me some good cursed items, but when they're too scary for museums, that makes me want to run away. Hello everyone, and welcome back to our channel. I'm your host Emily, and today we're counting down our list of the top 10 cursed historical items even museums fear. Number 10. Cursed Maori Warrior Masks Maoris are indigenous people of New Zealand, and according to Maori tradition, the warriors carve and paint masks before a battle, and it's said if they die, their spirits live on within the mask. The warrior mask is an important part of their tradition. Now, Maori tradition dictates that a menstruating woman is tapu or taboo, and so are the masks. So if both of them come into contact with each other, it would invoke a curse. Also, pregnant women are considered sacred. So a Maori museum in Wellington, New Zealand tells pregnant and menstruating women to stay away from several sacred Maori artifacts, including traditional Maori warrior masks as they could invoke a curse. If this could happen, why would they even show it off? This would stress me out if I went or even worked in this museum. Number 9. Thomas Busby's Chair Popularly known as Busby's Stoop Chair, this wooden chair is cursed by the spirit of Thomas Busby, who by the way was known to end the lives of many people. In 1702, before being put to death for his crimes, he requested to have a meal in his favorite local pub. Upon finishing his meal, he stood and said, My sudden death come to anyone who dare sits on my chair. And ever since then, 63 people who dared to sit on the chair met untimely and terrifying deaths. World War II pilots who took turns in the chair perished during battle, a delivery man died in a car crash right after trying the chair out in the 1970s, and so on. In 1978, the pub's landlord gave the chair to the Thirsk Museum, along with strict instructions for it to be suspended above the floor, and it has been hanging there ever since. Number 8. The Crying Boy Painting. The Crying Boy painting was painted by Italian painter Giovanni Braglin. Copies were widely distributed from the 1950s onward. The curse related to the Crying Boy painting began when it was reported that many houses containing the copy of the painting caught fire. But this painting was always found undamaged amidst the burnt ruins. An Essex firefighter claimed that in a number of houses destroyed due to a fire, they have found a copy of this painting. Surprisingly, none of these paintings were damaged, even though nearby things had been burnt to ashes. He also stated that no firefighter would allow a copy of the painting in his own house. Now this news spread like wildfire pun not intended, and people started removing the painting from their homes, believing it was cursed. Number 7. The Woman from Lem Statue The Woman from Lem Statue is nicknamed the Goddess of Death, and you'll soon find out why. This limestone statue was unearthed at Lem, Cyprus in 1878. Dating from 3500 BC, its real purpose is unknown, but it may have been a fertility statue. This little innocent looking statue has become famous for the deadly effect it's had on each of its owners. The statue has belonged to at least four different families, and each one suffered a great amount of tragedy once they started owning it. Lord Elfont was the first owner. Within six years of buying the statue, all seven of his family members passed away. The second owner, Ivar Mensusi, and his whole family died within four years of attaining the statue. The third owner, Lord Thompson Knoll, suffered the death of his whole family also within four years. The statue eventually ended up as property of Sir Alan Biverbrook, and he, his wife, and their two daughters were the next to die. Seems cursed to me. So to try to stop the curse from harming anyone else, Biverbrook's two surviving sons donated the statue to the Royal Scottish Museum in Edinburgh. After that, the museum curator who handled the statue died within a year. Today, the woman from Lem statue remains tucked away safely behind glass at the museum where it can't cause any more harm. Well, Hopefully. Number 6. Cursed Mirror at Myrtle's Plantation A historic home and former plantation, the Myrtle's Plantation in St. Francisville, Louisiana is considered one of America's most haunted places. The plantation house is rumored to be on top of an ancient Tunica Indian burial ground, which is just like, duh, of course, it's haunted. It is home of at least 12 ghosts, and it's often reported that 10 people had their lives ended in the house. There are many creepy legends surrounding this property. 
and the tale of the cursed mirror is one of the most famous. According to legend, the former owner of the house, Sarah Woodruff, and her two daughters were poisoned by their slave and are trapped inside the mirror. Visitors of the house report seeing handprints, strange marks, and even figures dressed in old fashioned clothes lurking in the mirror. I feel like being trapped inside a mirror would suck. Number 5 Screaming Skull of Burton Agnes Hall An Elizabethan manor house in the village of Burton Agnes, England is home to a paranormal object known as the Screaming Skull. Ok, just the name of the Screaming Skull terrifies me because like how? Well, the skull belonged to Catherine Ann Griffith who died in the house in 1620 after being attacked by bullies. Every night, a terrifying ghost is seen roaming around the skull making tremendous noises and scary Scaring out everyone who tried to remove the skull. Now, why does Anne do this? Well, she was somewhat of a troubled girl, and she told her sisters that she would never rest unless part of her could remain in our beautiful home as long as it shall last. She made them promise that when she was dead, her head would be served and preserved in the hall forever, and the sisters hesitantly agreed. But when Anne died, she was buried in the churchyard. Then the ghost would come to the house at night and scare everyone. But remembering Anne's dying words, the sisters took counsel with the vicar and eventually agreed that the grave should be opened. The skull was brought into the house and so long as it was undisturbed, the hall was peaceful and untroubled. Many attempts have been made to get rid of it, but they never could and it should honestly just stay there forever. Number 4 Annabelle Doll Ok, it's not a haunted list without a haunted doll. Now is it? The Annabelle Doll is probably one of the best known haunted dolls in history. Bought in an antique shop in 1970, a woman gave a Raggedy Ann doll to her daughter Donna who was in nursing school. Let me just say I had my own Raggedy Ann doll growing up and it always gave me the chills. Now Donna and her roommate Angie kept coming home to find the doll in different positions and different locations. Then the doll began leaving them notes reading help. A psychic told them the girl was possessed by the spirit of a girl named Annabelle who had died at the location where their apartment complex had been built. But the girl's friend Lou thought there was something more sinister about Annabelle and she levitated up his body and strangled him until he passed out. The next night the roommates heard what sounded like someone in the next room. Lou investigated and he was found screaming with two massive claw marks on his chest although no one else was in the room except Annabelle. The girls called Ed and Lorraine Warren who decided the doll was actually a conduit to hell that a demon was using. Two exorcisms didn't work and the Warrens took Annabelle home. Upon arriving home, Ed and Lorraine placed the doll in Ed's study and the doll levitated and around the house. Even when placed in a locked office in an outer building, the Warrens claimed that she would turn up later inside the house. Finally, the Warrens decided to lock Annabelle up for good. The Warrens had a specifically made glass and wood case constructed upon which they inscribed the Lord's Prayer and St. Michael's Prayer. For the rest of his life, Ed would periodically say a binding prayer over the case, ensuring that the sinister spirit and the doll remained good and trapped. Number 3 The Little Manny A three inch tall stone head is known as the Little Manny with Daddy's Horns. Strange name, I know. After a cleaning lady stumbled upon it in a basement floor in Manchester, England, local scholars Tony Ward and Pat Ellison Reed explored the site and found evidence of a strange ritual. As Manchester Museum curator John John Pragg said it was around a circle of candle holders and inside the circle they found the remains of chicken and har bones, ivory counters used for scoring at billards, and other offerings including a mother figures whose head had been broken off accidentally. Since the little manny looked a lot like Celtic stone heads, everyone generally assumed that's what it was. But when it was displayed at the Manchester Museum in 1991, a visitor identified it as Nomaly, hope I said that right, a type of figure from Sierra Leone. While Nomaly is known to bring strong harvests and other good fortune, the little manny seemingly brought a fair amount of bad luck to its British handlers. Manchester Museum staff members suffered car accidents, bike accidents, burglaries, broken pant zippers, and all manners of trouble. Pat actually plucked some hairs from her own head and wrapped them around the statue, claiming that it would be, as Prag called, much warmer and friendlier now. Number 2 Dybbuk Box In Jewish folklore, 
a Dybbuk is an evil spirit. Supposedly, someone accidentally summoned the demon while using a homemade Ouija board, but managed to trap it inside the wine cabinet. The Dybbuk box came to light in 2001 when Kevin Manis purchased it and started having terrible nightmares. He then decided to gift the cabinet to his mother, who suffered a stroke the very day she received it. Not just this, but every person who ever owned the wine cabinet has reported experiencing horrible events. The last owner of the cabinet, Jason Haxton, found out that the box possesses the spirit of a malicious Jewish creature called the Dybbuk, who has the ability to haunt and possess the living. Jason Haxton was the director of the Museum of Osteopathic Medicine. He not only had nightmares, but developed a strange skin disease and began coughing up blood. At that point, Jason contacted his local rabbis, sealed the Dybbuk back in the box, and then hid it from the world. And coming in at number one is the Iceman. The mummy of Otzi, aka the Iceman, was found in 1991 in the Otzel Alps, Italy. It's believed that the Iceman belonged to 3000 BCE and his body was preserved because of a glacier that surrounded him after he died. However, soon after his discovery, people who were involved with his discovery began to die due to violent accidents. Forensics pathologist Rainer Henn died in a horrific car accident, mountaineer Kurt Fritz died in an avalanche, and hiker Helmut Simon died after falling off a dangerous hidden path. The Iceman then claimed three more lives in quick succession between 2004 and 2005. It's thought that anyone who comes in contact with the Iceman will die, and people believe that the discovery of the Iceman is a curse and has the power to destroy mankind. All I'm saying is, I would never get close to him. Well, that's all for our list of the top 10 cursed historical items even museums fear. Would you visit any of these objects? I don't think I would. I don't want to risk getting cursed. Now, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and make sure to like and subscribe while you're down there. I'm your host, Emily, and I'll see you next time. Peace.